I'm going to show you how to use equilibrium tables, which are a tool that we can use to solve more complicated equilibrium problems later on. Uh, I'll just divide them up so you can see they are three separate problems. And if we take the first one here, where you can see that we have a reaction where nitrogen is reacting with three moles of hydrogen to give two moles of ammonia, and it's an equilibrium. And we're given some information. We're told that initially 0.1 moles of nitrogen was mixed with 0.1 moles of hydrogen and that there was no ammonia present at the beginning. And then the system was allowed to come to equilibrium and you're given the extra piece of information that at equilibrium there is uh, 0.07 moles of nitrogen but you're not told how much hydrogen and ammonia there are at equilibrium and that's what we want to work out. So what I'm going to do is put an extra row in the middle of this table which I'm going to call uh, moles used or produced. You could call it perhaps the change, change in moles. So you can see that for nitrogen we started with 0.1, we ended up with 0.07, so we must have used 0.03. Okay, We could say minus 0.03. So 0.1 minus 0.03 gives us 0.07. Now how much hydrogen was used? Well we know that for every one mole of nitrogen three moles of hydrogen get produced. It's a one to three Sorry, for every one mole of nitrogen used, three moles of hydrogen get used. So it's a one to three stoichiometric ratio. So if we know that 0.03 moles of nitrogen were used, then we also know that three times that, which would be 0.09, moles of hydrogen must have been used. So the moles of hydrogen left at equilibrium is 0.1 minus 0.09, which gives us 0.01. On the other side of the reaction, we've got the products. Now, going back to the stoichiometry of the reaction, you can see there's one mole of nitrogen uh, ends up giving two moles of ammonia, so that's a one to two ratio. If we used 0.03 moles of nitrogen, then we must have produced twice as much ammonia, so that's 0.06, and it was produced, so we'll make it positive, plus 0.06. So we started with none, we created 0.06 moles, so at equilibrium, we have 0.06. And that's our table filled in. Okay, let's do the second one. So we'll put in this intermediate row again, call it the change row. Um, I have some people call, uh, I have seen some people call these ice tables, as in I for initial, C for change, and E for equilibrium. If you uh, like to write them out like that, that's a great idea. Okay, so in this one we've got methane reacting with water to give carbon monoxide and hydrogen. We're told that initially there is one mole of each of the four species. And we're told that at equilibrium we uh, have 1.6 moles of hydrogen. So we can fill in the change row for hydrogen. Uh, obviously 0.6 moles of hydrogen was produced. Okay, now we look at the stoichiometric ratios. You can see that hydrogen is 3, all of the other species are 1, so they're all a 1 to 3 ratio. So if three, sorry, if 0.6 moles of hydrogen was produced, then one third that amount of carbon monoxide must have been produced, which would be 0.2, because it's a 1 to 3. 0.2 times 3 is 0.6. So then our equilibrium moles of carbon monoxide, are, you started with 1, you added 0.2, so you've got 1.2 moles at equilibrium. Um, similarly, for the water, it's 1 to 3 with the hydrogen, except that this is a reactant, so it's being used up. So the change is not plus 0.2, it is minus 0.2. 0.2 moles of water are used to give 0.6 moles of hydrogen. So we had one, we used 0.2, so we're left with 0.8. Uh, and the same with the methane. We used 0.2 and we end up with 0.8. Okay, uh, third example, we've got two moles of sulfur dioxide reacting with one mole of oxygen to give two moles of sulfur trioxide. We start off with two moles of sulfur dioxide and two moles of oxygen and no sulfur trioxide. 
and we're told that at equilibrium there's 0.7 moles of sulfur trioxide. So let's put our change row in and we can fill that in for sulfur trioxide. There must have been 0.7 moles produced. Uh, now if we look at sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide, they're a 2 to 2 ratio, which is the same as a 1 to 1 ratio. So however much sulfur trioxide is produced, the same amount of sulfur dioxide must have been used. So we produced 0.7 moles of sulfur trioxide, so we must have used 0.7 moles of sulfur dioxide. And that means that 1.3 moles is left at equilibrium. Uh, for oxygen, it's a 1 to 2 ratio. So if we uh, produced 0.7 moles of sulfur trioxide, then half as much oxygen must have been used. So that would be minus 0.35. And the moles at equilibrium will be 2 minus 0.35, which will be 1.65. Okay. So... Uh, that's how you fill in these types of uh, equilibrium tables. We're now going to have a look at a, a variation on equilibrium tables where instead of knowing all our quantities explicitly, uh, we have some of them in terms of a variable called x. So here we've got this. Ignore that straight line there. That was the cursor when I took a screenshot. Um, you fill them in exactly the same way as the ones we were doing just before. They are just as easy. The only thing to take into account is that you're dealing with uh, a variable called x. But the, uh, the way of thinking, the logic is exactly the same. So we'll take this first one. We've again got nitrogen reacting with hydrogen to give ammonia. And we're told that initially we have, uh, in this case, two moles per litre. We're doing it in concentration, but the mass is identical. Okay. When you do these reactions, you're generally doing them in a constant volume, and that means that uh, the way that the moles changes is exactly the same as the way that the concentration change changes. So these tables can be written in terms of moles, as we did on the last slide, or they can be written in terms of concentrations, and you just treat them in exactly the same way. Okay, so we have two moles per litre of nitrogen, and we have two moles per litre of hydrogen, and no ammonia to start off with. And we're told that when it reaches equilibrium, we have 2x moles per litre of ammonia. So let's put in our change row. Okay, we started with zero uh, ammonia, we end up with 2x. So our change is positive 2x. Whatever x is, we have uh, produced 2x worth of ammonia. Let's do nitrogen. Nitrogen has a 1 to 2 ratio with ammonia. So if 2x moles per litre of ammonia was produced, then half as much nitrogen must have been produced. So half of 2x is x. And of course nitrogen is a reactant, so it's being used. So that will actually be minus x. So we started with 2, we used up x, so at equilibrium we have 2 minus x. Now let's have a look at hydrogen, and rather than comparing hydrogen with ammonia, that's a 2 to 3 ratio, which is mathematically a little bit harder to deal with. It's simpler to just look at nitrogen and hydrogen, which is a 1 to 3 ratio. That's a bit simpler. So we know that X amount of nitrogen was used, and we know that three times as much hydrogen must have been used. So three times X is 3X, so we have used 3x worth of hydrogen. Notice this is because nitrogen to hydrogen in the reaction is a 1 to 3 ratio. So if you use one mole of nitrogen, you must use three moles of hydrogen. Down here we used x moles of nitrogen, so we must have used 3x moles, or moles per litre rather, of hydrogen. So we started with two moles of hydrogen. Initially we used 3x, so our equilibrium concentration is 2 minus 3x. Now it looks a bit weird having all your equilibrium concentrations in terms of x, um, but you will find as we go on and do more complicated equilibrium problems that it actually means you can solve quite interesting uh, problems without having to know exactly uh, what the concentrations were at equilibrium uh, straight off. Okay, let's do the other one.
Okay, that's all for now.